Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now Toyota has been making hybrids since a long time. It, their first model was the Toyota Prius but then when it was launched about 12 years back I think at that point of time the technology for the hybrids was pretty basic and it was in its nascent phase but then as it progressed it, it just became better and better. So Toyota participates in the Le Mans racing with their hybrid version and this technology is basically what it gets into their road going cars as well. So if you want to search about the Toyota, that particular car, so the latest one is a TS050, which is competing in this, this year, which is the 2019. So make sure to check that out because it's an interesting bit of detail that you would know about those cars as well. But anyways, this car has been pretty good and impressive when it comes to economy when it uh, when it comes to range when it comes to the driving conditions because because let's say hybrid cars are not particularly famous about the handling or the driving features but this car takes all of those boxes now when toyota launched the first car which was toyota prius it was again as i said it was very basic but then this car has improved a lot starting off with the outside bit now styling has pretty much been the same with the previous generations a few improvements here and there to tell you that this is a hybrid which is the blue color logo on the front now there's a, there's one thing if you want to know if the car is hybrid or not the the logo is a blue color and there is a side strip on the uh, on on the on the rear door which is blue and so that basically signifies that the car is a hybrid and if you move around the the, the car is fairly flowy and let me tell you it it Camry is a it's a pretty wide car so when you sit inside you also get roomy feeling inside the car as well and it it continues with your 18 inch uh, diamond cut wheels you get led headlights in the front you get this fancy grill in the in the in the center in the back also you get two led brake lights when you open the bonnet you realize how complicated this car is and sometimes we don't realize how these cars work because when you just you you tend to just put your car into drive but then a lot of technology works inside to power this hybrid that's when you realize how complicated this car is and then you don't tend to feel that because when you put it into drive it's much easier to just drive around while the computer on in, inside the car is doing all the calculations of making sure you get the maximum efficiency out of the car and also making sure to switch between electric and the engine mode in between as and when required now the most impressive factor about this car is the starting procedure so let me just get take you inside and show you the entire starting procedure and let's go for a drive now step inside and you are greeted with a lot of premium materials inside the car starting off with the, the the seats itself now the seats are pure leather and they come with perforated design in between as you can see and then it comes with a bit of stitching on the side as well the whole premium feeling just continues with the the side door cards again that on the side is covered with the leather uh, covering and also there is one plastic bit on top which is black but this plastic bit feels a little cheap again the door seem pretty long because of the, the way this car is but again it feels light as well uh, i can confirm you that the plastic on the on the door cards is is pretty simple i wish they had put that uh, as soft touch as well because the soft touch plastic comes on the dashboard as well and also the, the there is an there is an entire infotainment system which is made out of a single glass which continues over till the end and it gives that really flowy design inside as well now the starting procedure is pretty simple you step inside you press the brake thought uh, the brake pedal and you press the power button now the surprising factor is there is no noise i'm sorry there's the seat the warning sign so when you step inside there is literally no noise at the start because the car starts on the battery pack first so the first few kilometers the car drives on the ev power and then when the, the battery goes down or when you reach a, a, a threshold uh, the, the speed threshold which is about 40 kilometers the car switches to an engine so or or the engine and the motor combined power that 
the computer does all of the calculations. So, uh, in, 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 in a pure battery range, it, it still gives you about 10 to 15 kilometers of range when you drive it at 40 kilometers and then it keeps charging and discharging on its own. When you brake, it charges and then when you, when you, when you accelerate, it discharges the, the batteries. And again, the, the, the procedure is fairly simple. As you drive a normal car, you put the car in D and you are off. Continuing with the interiors, the car comes with a sunroof. There is a center screen in the dashboard. So there is a small sort of information screen in the center. And that displays basically all of your uh, information regarding the car or whatever settings you want to do or change in the car you can you can get all the information while driving then on the two side you have a sort of meter that shows you when the car is charging and when the car is in eco mode the rpms are basically converted into your your sort of information uh, range on your right side you have the normal odometer steering wheel comes with all your infotainment control systems and also your cruise control is being uh, controlled from the steering wheel itself now moving on into the center console and this car has an infotainment system which is a seven inch touch screen this touch screen is 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 glossy to my liking and you know when the when the when the screen has a glossy surface it tends to leave your fingerprints and then that is what is happening with this one as well but otherwise the the whole infotainment system is pretty pretty smooth and crispy and it works uh, quite quick the moment you come in and you start the car it, it loads up easily and then you get all the features from your menus to your audio or your audio feature your map your your app to connect the phone and also it, you get all your various media controls as well now one thing good about toyota is the simplicity if you know anything about toyota toyota tends to keep everything very simple the fact that when i got into this car it just took me literally 10 minutes to just understand the car of how it was functioning and then i was just ready to go and knowing everything about the car so that is what Toyota is brilliant in doing. Now it just can't, it just shows in the in the in the interiors as well because every button is quite clearly marked. There is nothing nothing hidden feature or anything. It's just pretty straightforward. So even the the touch screen has uh, the buttons on the side for your home menu audio, so that people who still love buttons can still use them and. People who love touchscreen can still use the touchscreen and that is a pretty balanced approach I would say in terms of how, how the, the, the touchscreens should be designed. Moving on with the AC controls, AC controls is pretty basic, again it's again straightforward and it's not much into the infotainment system so it's, you, get, you still get the traditional uh, controls, the dials for your uh, AC controls. The car has a sunroof which is pretty standard size and it functions quite normally and it's got five seats, all leather seats and the, the leather seats come with uh, stitching and perforated design. The seats are pretty comfortable and sometimes if you have a taller person then you may find the rear seats a bit of an issue because the rear seats they do lack some amount of st the leg space sometimes because for a taller guy who's sitting in the front the, the amount of space just reduces slightly in the back but anyways it's not a concern because the seats are super comfortable and they just are in the perfect size so it comes with a standard one to the, a 12 volt 120 watt power socket in the front and one usb and an aux port in the in the front and also it comes with a wireless charging capability so you can just drop your phone on the stand that it has been given also the stand is a little to precise you need to be very precise in order to put that phone and only then the the phone will start charging which is what i found unlike some other manufacturers where they have slots where the where the phone would sit exactly and you know where to put the phone but in this you have to sort of find your way around and then make sure the phone starts charging and also it's got an on and off button to make sure you switch it off when you don't want to use it 
Now in the back you get two 2.1 USB ports as well which you can use to charge the uh, your phones. So the car is decently having a, a, quite a bit of storage starting off from the side where there is just enough space to put one bottle one not even a big bottle but a small bottle but it's the way the doors have been designed and also in the center where there is a where you can charge your phone the lid the lid is slideable so and there is storage underneath that so you can use that and also store anything that you want then there is also storage in the handrest and that is the biggest storage that you would find in the car while we are discussing about storage this car since it has battery packs in the back and you would tend to think that it would have the uh, the the storage capacity in the boot would be compromised but let me confirm it's not compromised at all toyota has been very clever in in making sure that there was no uh, there was no compromise in the space at the back and that is why you get enough of space in the back to put two big bags or even smaller bags in the sides as well and it's not even that you can the, the the rear seats are collapsible so you can and in fact both of them are collapsible and you can just fold them down and then you have so much of storage inside so this car also comes with a, a screen blinder for the back as well so and that is also operated from your steering wheel itself so you can just go into your options and then press the the close button and then it will close the the blinder for you in the back and again you can open it if you want whenever you feel like powering this car is a 2.5 liter non turbocharged petrol engine which uh, produces 184 brake horsepower and 220 newton meters of torque but it is again it's a dual system so it's been clubbed with a with an electric motor which which delivers a 118 bhp and 202 newton meters of torque now i have mentioned this in the previous video as well so again the combined output for this system is about 221 bhp which is quite a decent power at at 500 by 5700 rpm now if you know anything about electric motors and i have explained it in my previous video as well where i did an economy challenge for this car so yes you can go there and check out the the entire video about uh, how how efficient this car is and how economical it is it actually delivers an efficiency of 17.5 on a long run and inside the city it, it manages to give me 16 and this is very nice if you ask me because a car this big and bear in mind this car is about 2.1 tons so this car weighs a lot as well and to be delivering a mileage like that it is something amazing and now again coming back to the electric motors now because it's got 202 newton meters of torque so whenever uh, the, the, you start the car and when there is an initial uh, electric uh, motor that that you start your car on which is very silent and which is very weird sometimes but you have to get used to that so when you start the car and start rolling the the, the first few kilometers because they are powered by the electric motor you get the burst of torque which is 202 newtons right from newton meters right from the the electric motors and that is the reason why this car can achieve some incredible acceleration rates now if you see for an electric motor the torque graph basically torque and the power graph so the torque starts basically right from the top and the power it, it starts peaking somewhere in the middle and then it goes down again now this is where the engine power comes in because the engine power uh, sort of gradually builds up from 0 to your 184 bhp which which is somewhere around 5 to 6000 rpm uh, somewhere I'm sorry uh, 3000 to 4000 rpm and that is where the engine power is useful in the middle phase while the acceleration happens with the electric motors in the first phase so you get a rich sort of torque to accelerate this vehicle and 
to be honest this this car has really blown me in that department because this car is mighty fast because whenever you press the throttle okay if the car is in the in the ev mode or your eco mode then it takes some time to to sort of uh, pick up like a normal car but if your car is in normal or the sport mode then press the throttle and then this car is ready to deliver all the power it has straight and you can also see on the screen that there is a motor and uh, the engine power that is both being used to power the wheels because this car is pretty heavy so the brakes sometimes tend to feel a little softer or, 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 or a little incapable because let's be honest, it's 2,100 2, kilograms of a car which is 2.1 tons and this much of a car when it's moving at quite a decent speed, say about 100, it, it's got a, a, a chunk of momentum that it is building around and when you brake, that momentum is being transferred into the brakes in the form of heat and your brakes need to be really really efficient and sometimes it, it lacks that confidence when it comes to braking but uh, if you press the throttle hard enough uh, i'm sorry if you press the brake pedal hard enough then then the car will actually do a decent job with its brakes there is also when the car is driving in the electric mode or when the uh, in general when even the electric motors are working around this is whining sound which reminds you that this car is electric and that is sort of a giveaway sometimes and especially when it is driving in the electric mode i have got some really weird says in the mall in public parking wherever i go wherever i'm cruising at under below 40 kilometers when when the car is in the electric mode so it's literally quiet but then inside you can hear the whining now this car is pretty comfortable from inside and even the ride quality or or the ride itself is pretty comfortable as well because this car comes with the softer suspension and damper settings and because of that there is a bit of a roll i would say when you when you are into the corners but otherwise this car is pretty comfortable as a cruiser now turning radius on this car is pretty large and the steering wheel itself has a very soft feeling when you are driving this car manages to disguise its weight very very cleverly because there is an engine and the uh, and, uh, motor in the front and the uh, battery pack in the back and there is a pretty even distribution of the, the weight around the car and that is the reason the steering feels otherwise very nice and sharp as well but sometimes there is an occasional understeer but only that is when you are at a very high speed and you try to push the car beyond its limit but otherwise this car behaves quite well this car in terms of its safety system is also quite a bit loaded it also comes with a hill hold feature or even normal hold feature where it will hold your brakes for in the in the in the traffic or during uh, when you are when when you are standstill and in the drive mode in terms of safety feature it comes with abs it also comes with ebd it also has two front passenger airbags driver and the passenger airbags and also it comes airbags on the side you get curtain airbags as well and it's pretty much got everything it's also one annoying feature is if you do not wear your seat belt and i get the point why it is necessary so it, it it's that it just keeps beeping and the beeping gets louder till your ears would shatter so that's one feature if the the beeping was a little silent or a little quieter then it would have been much nicer but again i'm not saying it should not be it is a good feature but it gets a little annoying sometimes now to sum it up uh, let me be honest first of all that you know i wasn't a big fan of hybrids before and and i i, I wasn't getting what the fuss was all about but getting getting to spend time with this car has made me realize that it's 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 a pretty brilliant technology and if it's if it's done well especially by by the the, the manufacturers when they when they come out with technology like this and which is so refined then i don't think i i would i would ever complain about having any problems with a hybrid system 
because let's be honest you get the power of an engine and also from a motor and this is like a perfect setup and you don't even tend to realize that you know you are driving a hybrid car unless at lower speeds when there is okay there is an electric motor but you tend to get used to that fact or even the the start the start procedure and all of that it's a it's it's pretty easy system to understand and i also understood that in just about three days of driving this car but otherwise it's a fun car and 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 also because it's a comfortable car it's worth the 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 price to pay now this car starts from 133000 dirhams and if you ask me this is like a pretty good price because the, the the technology in this car is pretty fascinating and the way it calculates and it makes sure everything is working perfectly while giving you the maximum efficiency is pretty amazing and if it's done by a manufacturer like Toyota you can be rest assured that the technology on this car is going to be very good and also there is long term support for for these cars because because again it's being made by Toyota and and Toyota has been making these cars since a long time I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did then make sure to leave a like and also if you have any questions about this the, this car then feel free to write it down in the comment section below and I will make sure to answer them and also a sub will be massively appreciated until we meet next time bye bye